In today's video, we are going to be talking about how I use a blender in my distillery as well as why do I put copper at the end of the run once all the liquid has recondensed then it only drops through the copper. Why do I do that? Now in the previous video I mentioned that I use a blender in my case a stick blender to rapid aerate my liquids or my finished product so I can taste it especially after proofing it down. Now I've been asked couple of times why do I do this so let me quickly explain but before we get to that I need a spirit that I want to introduce oxygen into rapidly after proofing it down so I can explain the difference between the two why well, you should start using a stick blender to get your spirit ready for tasting a lot faster instead of leaving it overnight now the spirit we are going to be rapid aerating so we can actually get it to start tasting similar to the end product is a brandy now the brandy in question is our raisin brandy that we did on the channel now it's been in this barrel for the last three months it is starting to head into the over oaking area i did expect that because this is a first use barrel meaning that we're going to get a ton of wood impact very quickly so what, well, what i want to do now is drain the liquid out give it a taste and then see what we need to do with the spirit once we have drained this barrel out so let's quickly get this barrel dumped let's get it proof down use our blender and i'll explain why do we use the blender now that we have decanted the whiskey and we've separated it all out got a jar at the back here about five liters of the good stuff on the inside of it um, that we're going to leave in this jar now it does not have an airtight seal at the top here so we are going to allow some of the oxygen to exchange. I'm going to change this lid over to a new type of lid that I'm working on that will give me the same uh, oxygen exchange that you will get in a barrel, but just at a much smaller scale. So this can stand in this jar and then age for a good couple of months still to come. And then we'll can see if the flavors develop and we don't risk over oaking it. So this is just going to stand exactly like this up until I get that new plug in the top. Now over here, I've got one liter of the product in my stainless steel little decanter. I want to proof it down to tasting. If you can remember, we put the brandy into the barrel at 70% ABV. After coming out of the barrel, we had a ABV drop of about 3%. So... I did my calculations to bring this one liter down. I'm going to add about 500 mils of water and that should bring us to the desired ABV that we want. Now generally what I would do if I want to taste this immediately, I would have to leave it overnight. So I'll put it into a jar or something, seal, seal it loosely and then leave it overnight for all those volatile chemicals to escape as well as the flavors to marry back together but if you want a quick taste and you want to get some of those flavors to mellow out really quickly and get a lot of oxygen in real quick that is where the blender comes in now this trick i learned over on the distillers talk podcast i'll put a link down below if you want to go check out the podcast alan and the guys do a fantastic job over on the distillers talk they talked about using the blender to rapid infuse some oxygen and get some of those high funky flavors out. Tested it, loved it, and now I only use that method to get my flavors ready. So let's quickly blend up this brandy. Okay, so now I'm just going to keep blending it for a good five minutes. Get as much oxygen into it as possible. If you do this for the first time, you will be amazed at how much smell comes off of this as you are blending it. Five minutes of blending done. In this side here, we have our proof down but not blended brandy. This side here, we have our proof down and blended brandy. Now, if you look really close, you can see a slight difference in color, but not too much. This is just because this one looks a bit cloudy because there's a ton of oxygen in there now. It's going to dissipate over a period of time. It normally takes about three hours for all of the oxygen to dissipate out of it, but straight away on the nose there's a massive difference this year has jagged kind of smells to it you can smell the alcohol right at the top where on this side it's a lot sweeter a lot mellower in the flavors 
but you can also smell a lot more. On this side, you can smell that sherry that we made the raisin brandy from or the, the sherry that the raisins turned into when we distilled it. On this side, you have a lot more of the wood impact and on this side, the wood impact is now lovely and balanced. So it is not over oak yet, but you can actually smell the raisins, you can smell the wood. On this side, everything is kind of like little speed humps. You, you get a flavor and then you're hit by another flavor and so on and so forth. And it just keeps on hitting you with different flavors. It's not all mended back together, but that will fix over time. But it normally takes about a day or two with this takes about five minutes and you get a fantastic product. Now let's quickly do the taste. So on this side, very sweet, nice sherry flavors, but there are some jagged flavors. This side, yeah. So this side, it's all raisin, all sherry with a hint of wood at the back. You will not believe the difference. So I would definitely suggest get a stick blender, try it for yourself when you're proofing down your liquor. And even if you're not proofing down liquor and you just want to see what impact it has on liquor that you have aged, it does make a massive difference. So yeah, I will definitely suggest you give it a try whenever you can. Now for the second part, as promised, at the end of my condenser, I have a jar of copper SPP. Now, if you don't know what SPP is, it's this little spiral prismatic packing. Now this is copper packing that I put into a sight glass at the end. Now it doesn't need to be in a sight glass. I just like the look of sight glasses on the still, so it looks quite cool. You can always just use a little copper scrubby in the top of your parrot or whatever. But what happens is, as you are distilling, there was a study done and it was uh, covered quite comprehensively and still behind the bench. I'll put a link down to his video below. But where they tested which, which components of a still has more impact on the actual end product if it's copper. And it was found that your condenser as well as your boiler has the biggest impact on the flavor of your product from being tasted as dirty to tasted as to tasting clean if you have copper in those paths. Now, for my still in my boiler, I put a couple of uh, crumped up pieces of copper inside of the boiler when I turn it on, as well as I have copper bubble plates in my column, and then I have the copper at the end. Now, this removes the meaty vegetal flavors from the, from the distillate, and it actually takes out the sulfurs and that kind of stuff that you can smell and taste. Now, if you want more detail on um, the impact it has and the study that was done, I'll put a link down to Still Behind the Benches video down in the description box as well as a little card up top here. So you can click over and go watch that. It's super interesting, but yeah, that's why I learned it and I've been using it in my whiskey distillations ever since. You will remember from the vodka distillations that I did, I normally put your activated carbon or charcoal into the side glass so it actually filters out those last little bits and nasty flavors. So yeah, that is why I've got copper at the end of my run. It can pull out those meaty, cured meat kind of flavors as well as the sulfury flavors that uh, I tend not to like in my whiskey. If you liked watching the video so far, remember to hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up as well as leave a comment down below and I'll see if I can get back to you as soon as possible. And if you stuck around this far, thank you very much for watching and have a lack of day.